watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Refuge Healing Church presents Watch God. Join us for the next 30 minutes as we study the Word of God. So be blessed and encouraged. And now, Inez Walker. Praise the Lord. We're so very glad that you tuned in today to watch God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and you can rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for his anointing and for his power. We praise God for everything that he has done and everything that he's getting ready to do in our life. We want you to know that God is working. Even when we are sleeping, when we think that he's not working, he's still working on our behalf. I want to say to you that you are welcome to come to the Refuge Healing Church every first Sunday at 8 o'clock. That's the healing service and on the second, third, fourth, and fifth, possibly at 11 o'clock a.m. You can also write us at Post Office Box 2132. We thank God that you can call Dial a Prayer every Saturday. Those numbers are 387-6361 or 325-7975. God is a good God. He looks beyond all of our faults and he see our needs. We thank God for being with us all the time. Blessing us one by one and name by name. Creating in all of us a clean heart and renewing the right spirit within us. We want you to know that God loves you. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Everything that you need, God already got it worked out. Again, you are welcome to the church. The church address is 506 South 6th Street, Monroe, Louisiana. We are honoring the laws of the government. We are doing the, the safety distance and we're also wearing our masses to church. So be encouraged. If you come and don't have one, we can assist you. But the word of the Lord comes to bless us and keep us, and give us a mind to live right. Hold on to what God has taught us. Now you must understand that God loves you today. And he's concerned about your well-being. He, he already then look beyond all of our faults and saw our needs because at one time or another we were all in trouble. But I must give God the glory and all the honor. He rescued me and he rescued you. And you that, that have not been rescued yet, he will rescue you. I want you to know that God is blessing us even right now. He loved us beyond measures. Gave up his only begotten son, the one son that he had. That we could have salvation today. Now all of you all that are listening to me and believe in the words that I speak. If you have not had your shot, go and take it. It's a life or death situation. The Delta virus is up on the land, and, and you need to take the shot so that you, vaccination simply means I'm guarding you or I'm protecting you from what's on, on the land that's contagious. Well, what if I've taken the shot and still got it? At least it won't be as hard on your body as it would if you hadn't gotten it. Trust me. Have you got it, Pastor Walker? Yes, I have. Because I believe in obeying the laws of the land. In spite of God saying we could eat a deadly thing and receive no harm, we're not eating anything. There is a, there is a disease upon the land. It's not about eating. It's about what's spreading among us. And I believe God obeyed the law. Do what it tells us to do. Protect yourself. Protect your children. And let God have his way with you. 
Continue to pray. Plead the blood of your family every day. There are people in the hospital that's sick. There are people at home that's sick. But we pray a, a speedy, a speedy healing, a speedy deliverance in the name of Jesus. We thank God for what he is doing and what he has done in our life. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, pray a prayer for the sick before I get started today. And know that prayer is always in order. God, we come before you right now thanking you for everything you have done and everything that you're going to do. You have brought it to my attention that prayer availeth much. And we praise you and we magnify you to those that have been healed of the illness that have plagued their bodies. And those that are in recovery, we thank you for divine healing right now. In the name of Jesus. We plead your blood that people that have not been vaccinated, that they will go and be vaccinated in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that you're doing for us right now. We thank you for the, the things that, you, that have not been done that we don't even know needs to be done. Thank you for it. Bless every church door that's open in your name. Cause us to obey the laws of the land. How we thank you for it being done right now. And I speak life and life more abundantly. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to curse this disease from the roots. In the name of Jesus, cause sin to dry up from, from the earth. Cause us to live right. Those that are struggling to live right, give them a mind and live right. Those that are going through in their physical body, Keep them strong, I pray, in Jesus' name. I ask you to lift every burden, every circumstance, every condition. I ask you to lift it right now. Put it back in the lake of fire, God. I thank you for all that, that, the, that you're doing for us as believers. Touching the unbelievers as well. Letting them know that there is a God in heaven that looks beyond all their faults and see their needs. You did it for me, and I know you'll do it for them. I thank you for it being done right now. In Jesus' name, amen. There's not a sin on the land that God will not forgive you for. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how you've done it. God will forgive you. And to the saints, he speaks about blasphemy. He was not talking to the sinner. How we thank God for his anointing right now. In Jesus' name. All you that are labor and heavy laden, come to God and he'll give you rest right now. Don't wait for somebody to, 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 to come and knock on your door or somebody to say it's too late. Come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. If you want to hear the truth, there are many churches in this city that's, that's anointed with truth. We the Refuge Healing Church, we wouldn't lie to you. Come by, fellowship, and hear the truth for yourself. God has given everybody the gift of discernment. You will be able to discern right from wrong. I want you to know that I love you. God bless you and may God keep you. May the prayers of the righteous continue to avail it much. We thank God for the throne room of prayer in Jesus' name. How we thank him for it being done right now. I'd like to take this time and wish the Refuge Healing Church, Refuge Healing International Church, a happy anniversary. Our anniversary is August 9th, which is this Sunday. We opened the church up 30 years ago on August 9th which was a Friday night. Oh, what a time we had. What a, what a communion we had with God. And I thank, I thank God for what he allowed us to do. 30 years later, we're still pressing toward that high calling in Christ Jesus. I want you to know, it's your time, Refuge, to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. 
Know that God has brought you and he's still bringing you. Glory to his precious name. I want you to know that I love y'all. Continue to stay blessed. Pray like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for his word. We'll go out and it will not come back void. I come with an encouragement, an encouraging word, and a word to let you know that God rebukes us. He helps us, but he rebukes us. And we want to stay under, currently, under spiritual guidance. We want God to know that we believe that if we continue to trust in him and practice what he says do and not occasionally do what we want to do, God will absolutely bring us out. This is not one of my scriptures today, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray, then I can come. Then I will heal the land. Glory to God. Today's message is, the devil can't do anything without your consent. What I want you to do is being a, a child of God, refuse the devil. And know that the devil can't do anything without your consent. Amen. Going to the book of uh, 3 John, starting at the second verse, and we're going to read out to the 11th verse. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper it. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren come and testify of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers which have bored witnesses of, of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bringest forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. I wrote unto the church by Dothophus, who loveth to have the premises among them, receiving us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his, his, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with maliciousness, words, and not content therewith, neither do by himself receive the brethren, and forbid them that would, and cast them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. I want to say to my dear brothers and sisters to this morning, stay faithful. Do unto your brothers and sisters, treat strangers good. They have told the church about the church love. Please. Send them on their way in the manner that God, that's honoring God. It was for his sake that his name went out to help the pagans, to help the people. We ought also, therefore, to show hospitality to such people that we may work together for the truth. God loved us first, and we should welcome Anybody that comes to God. So when I come, I can, God can show us and bring to our attention spreading the truth and not malicious lies and nonsense. Not satisfying 
with that. He even refuses to welcome other believers who also stop those who want to do so and put them out of the church. Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil is not of God. What God is saying to us today, look, tell the people the truth. Some people are not going to even want to hear the truth. But when you send them away, you need to send them on their way in the manner that honors God. Let us be faithful with our brothers and sisters, with our, with our uh, strange people that come. Encourage one another. The Bible says, whatever you do, don't let your good be evil spoken of. Going to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, starting at the 14th verse. It says, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trotted upon foots of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are the salt of the earth. Whatever you do, don't lose the good news, which is the salt of God. Don't lose it. Because it's hard to make it salty again. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown away and trampled underfoot when you will allow the enemy to come in and destroy the word of God that is down on the inside of you. You are the light of the world. Stop walking in darkness. You are a town built up on a hill. You can't be hid. Neither do people like their lamp and put it under a bushel. Instead, they put it on a stand and give light to everyone that's in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Do not. Don't let the devil do anything without. Your consent. Amen. Going to the book of Romans. The seventh chapter. Very familiar passage of scripture. Seven and seven. It says, what shall I say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have known sin, but the law, for I have not known lust, except the law had said it, thou shalt not covet it. But sin, taken occasion by the commandments, wrought in me all manner of conspiracy. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandments came, sin revived and I died. And the commandments which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. For sin take occasion by the commandments deceiving me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandments holy, and just and good. Amen. What was then? That which is good made death unto me, God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, worketh death in me. By that which is good, that sin by the commandments might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am come, soul under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, I not. But what I hate that I do, 
if then I do, which then it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. But the things that I hate, I do it. If then I do that which, if I do that which I hate, I can sin unto the law that it is good. Now this is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. It is time for us to no longer want sin, covering sin, producing sin, giving sin an opportunity to rule our life in Jesus' name. When you say consent, you simply means giving permission for something to happen. Being in agreement, volunteering to the terms desiring, to the proposal of wrong or right doing. Stop letting the enemy use you. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus and the things of God and his word. Pray daily. Keep a prayer wheel turning in your heart. Stay submitted to the truth. Be real careful about what you let go down in your spirit. The key to living right is loving God beyond the worldly cares of this world. Trust God and, and lead, trust God to lead, guide, and show you a better way of living for him. Knowing that God is never, ever wrong, always remember his ways, his thoughts are right. They are never like ours. In the name of Jesus. Those things in our life that's not right, let us correct them. Let us be about doing the will of God. Selling out completely to God. Even when our flesh want to do wrong, yield to, your, to the Spirit of God. And stay on that straight and narrow path. Nugget, one, nugget number one. No change. Nothing can happen to your body without your consent. Having a mutual agreement in your mind. Nugget number two, the enemy has to have your approval to use you. You can resist him and always say no. Nugget number three, let us have passion for the truth. Don't turn our heads and believe a lie, but believe the truth. Look at number four. Life in Christ. Life in Christ Jesus is the greatest life you can have. Expect you're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some suffering. But yet God's way, living for God, is the best life. Look at number five. Sin is never your friend, no matter how good it sounds. Look at number six. Always remember, Jesus is where the power stands. No devil in hell can stand against God in Jesus' name. Look at number seven. Keep the devil out of your life. Keep the devil out of your life business. Stay truthful and honest to God because God knows all things. Look at number eight. Get, get the devil out of your spiritual house, which is your life, your love for God, the things that you're doing for God. Don't let him interrupt your living for Christ. He can't take out of you what you don't want out of you because God has a hedge of protection around your life. Look at number nine. The devil have no interest in your gifts, your talents. 
He's just wanting to, he just wants your soul. He have no problem with waiting for the right time and the right place to strike. Look at number 10. Following Jesus is the greatest gift of life on earth. It is time for us to think, write, and let wrong things go. It's time for us to stop stepping out on Jesus. In your mind, stop stepping out. In your thoughts, in yourself, in your body, stop stepping out on God. We as a people, we know what's right and we know what's wrong. The devil is always right, waiting for the right time and the right place to make a strike. Be holy. Hold your head up. Stand up for Christ. Stay spiritual minded. Keep your life here in Jesus, walk in peace and love. Stop volunteering yourself to the devil. Stop desiring to, 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 to get to his proposals. Let's do what we know the key to living right is. Loving God beyond the worldly cares of this world. Trusting God to lead and guide us and show us a better way of living for him. Knowing that God is never, ever wrong. Always know his ways and his thoughts are not like ours. Hold fast to the word of God. Look to the hills. The word is true all by itself. It stands alone. It don't need no help. And know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Give God all the praise, all the glory. Lay your issues, your problems at the feet of Jesus. And do not give the devil any consent. Because the devil can't do anything to you without your consent. Stay faithful and committed to God. Know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. See you next Saturday. Thank you for tuning in today's program. If you would like more information or need prayer, call 318-387-6361. We invite you to join us in one of our services as listed on screen. Our church is located at 506 South 6th Street, Monroe. Thank you for watching Watch God with Inez Walker.